think it really affects the education of the students because if the room is very hot or very cold, then the students have trouble focusing. Um, if it's really hot, then they're more concerned about trying to find water or get a water bottle or go to the fountain to get a drink. If it's really cold, they want to wear their coats. Does the smell of your classroom have an impact on your students? Yes, most definitely. Um, they come in and they complain every day. They ask if there is any other room available that we can use. They begged me to go to computer labs, the gym, the cafeteria, outside in the springtime, any, any where to get away from the smell. How often when does this occur? Um, it happens pretty much every day. Um, on windy days, it's worse. Um, typically between fifth and sixth period is when the smell is just repulsive. But again, on windy days, sometimes it's as soon as I walk in first period, it smells. How often do you need to open the windows in order to manage the smell? Um, just about every day. The problem is in the winter time it's really cold so you have to open the window and then it gets cold in here and then you close the window and it smells. And then you open the window and it's cold, close the window, it smells. Well, this is my fourth year teaching at Matthews. I taught in Youngstown City Schools and I also uh, did some work at Western Reserve High School. So compared to where they're at when they have new buildings, new facilities, um, you know, it makes a world of difference with the learning environment. Um, so I really can't control the thermostat and I really can't control um, the environment in our classroom because it's, or my thermostat is actually located in another classroom. Plus, I don't have any windows in my classroom so I can't open up a window to, uh, you know, if it's hot in here to you know, cool the kids off, get air flow in here. When you're checking homework going on in the classroom to see what kids are doing, you're, you're most likely going to trip over someone's foot or slip on a book or something and it's, and it's very easily being distracted when kids are so close. Um, when you're trying to do individual work. Um, from what I have seen with my experience with newer schools, our classrooms are much smaller and they do not have um, the technology and the resources that newer classrooms have. There's very little storage. Um, I have little to no storage in here. Most of my storage is out in the hallways. Um, the students can't work um, on larger levels. Everything has to be small and um, just there's, there's not a lot of space to move around and do different things. Well, currently in the library, and one of the things I can say is we work pretty hard to try to make the best of our situation. So in the library, um, you know, we have a lab going on. We don't want to close the library, so we have a temporary wall we put in. Uh, to try to give as much technology access to the kids we can. However, you know, we're functioning in a, in a century-old building and there's just a lot. Of, well, again, as, as somebody who's, uh, whose priority is to give uh, uh, students informational access, uh, I think one of the things that uh, we could have here, you know, that at these other schools is a wireless campus um, where students could, you know, access from their own, own electronic devices information. Uh, which would make it really uh, uh, put us into the 21st century as far as technology skills and they wouldn't have to physically even be at the library a lot of times because they'd be able to access the information from anywhere in school. As far as athletic facilities go incorporated here at the high school, um, 
they're probably the worst I've ever been into as a coach. Uh, being from Matthews, graduating from this school 20 some years ago, I mean, nothing really has changed, but you don't realize what other kids have and the potential that these other kids have um, until you get out in other communities and actually see the opportunities that they have just from facility standpoint alone. Um, our place is probably the smallest gym that you're going to find. A lot of concerns come with when you have a class of say 30, 35 kids as far as them having an opportunity to participate as well as even a safety issue. So I mean there's issues that come to play as far as just a structural standpoint, um, bleachers that takes like four or five kids to push in and out. Um, there's no place to store equipment so you're limited on a lot of things and as far as athletics go you're at a disadvantage anytime you go to another gym as far as the low ceilings in volleyball, basketball, I mean, right there's just a number of issues that come into play. So locker rooms um, have one, I believe in the boys room, one working shower that does have holes in the wall and in the ceilings. Uh, locker rooms, the doors, the windows do not open to uh, offer ventilation, so a lot of times it's excess of 90, 100 degrees in there, especially in the summertime and we have to keep them bolted shut for safety issues. The girls facility, a little bit better than the boys, um, but they are pretty bad. Boys, girls, I think have three working showers, so very limited. I'm a technology coordinator at Matthews Local Schools as well as Southington Local Schools. And uh, at Southington, several years ago, we actually got a K through 12 facility. And uh, with my experience at Southington uh, and the new technology there, um, we have an infrastructure that is a K through 12 campus. And uh, with that being centralized, the video distribution, um, the students can send their video classes with all of the networking in one facility. Um, they can utilize the equipment versus a district that has more than one building, have to divide all of their technology between three different buildings we can centralize that in one K through 12 facility and allow all the students to use the, the technology. I'm employed at Matthews three days a week and uh, with three buildings having old technology um, probably half of my time is, is spent managing and updating and uh, keeping the old technology um, utilized for the students and uh, with new technology a new facility and uh, new infrastructure. Um, my time could be better spent uh, managing that new infrastructure and that new technology to, to benefit the students. In what ways are our students hindered by a, lot, a lack of technology? Having old technology in the facilities um, as we do now, um, some of the new programs, some of the new infrastructure, video production classes, uh, web design classes, our students are not getting the benefit of utilizing new technology that, that other schools that have new facilities have. Uh, the structural status of the school is questionable because the building was uh, constructed in 1915 and therefore, uh, you know, with the asbestos removal and such that we've done over the years, I'm, I'm not sure how structurally sound the, the building is. Uh, I know that they've probably had people come in from the health department and other agencies to check on uh, how structurally sound the building is, but I think right now we've been putting money into a building that we're never going to get a return on. The money um, is for continued improvements. I guess that's why the bond issue is being asked or put before the voters in May. Uh, I think everybody who's been in the building realizes that we need a new building and uh, again our our amount of preventive maintenance that we're using is is probably money poorly spent but out of necessity uh, I think some of the hazards are the fact that uh, you know the steps um, it's not handicapped accessible in many ways um, the building is now overcrowded, bringing the 7th and 8th grade students up here from the Neal building. Um, you know, there's parts of the building that need constant uh, repair. 
the building, uh, especially the roof. We get a lot of leakage because it's a flat roof. And uh, I know my room in 307 has been fixed numerous times. The drop ceiling, some of the corners in the back have actually fallen in on the back of the room. Luckily, there was nobody, students or teachers back there at the time. Um, again, I, I think our students have done extremely well under very poor conditions. Uh, when you look at all the new schools that are being built, I, I think we're kind of maybe cheating our students out of the opportunity to have up-to-date, state-of-the-art technology uh, and, and other options. Not that they have not excelled. I think that's a, a, a tribute to the students we have here at Matthews. They've done the very best with limited resources. <music>